Hey everybody, today we're comparing three quiet drum set practice systems. The Remo Silent Strokes, the Aquarian Super Pads, and the Artom Mesh Heads. These seem to be the three leading products in this category on the market, so let's take a closer look at them. We'll be comparing cost, ease of use, rebound and feel, realism, and noise level, and hopefully figuring out which product is the best. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, I really hope you will. I created this channel to be an honest resource of all the non-glamorous drum stuff, all the nitty gritty techniques and tips that help us become better drummers. So I've been really curious for a while as to which of these three practice systems is the best. I've had the Aquarian Super Pads since the beginning of this year, and I've heard a lot about the Silent Strokes, and I heard more recently about the Artoms. I bought a 14-inch Artom mesh head and a 14-inch Silent Stroke mesh head to compare with the 14-inch Super Pad I have. So like I said there at the beginning, we're comparing cost, ease of use, rebound and feel, along with realism and noise level, and we're gonna write out a chart. Uh, comparing all these things, we'll be rating each of these categories, numbers one through five. Five is excellent, one is poor. So we'll see which scores the most fives and which pad wins. So starting off with cost, because that's pretty important. Just the 14 inch Aquarian Super Pad alone costs $60. By the time you've gotten the whole set of super pads, you've spent $263. Unfortunately for cost, we can really only give the Aquarian Super Pad a three. Now the Artom is $2 less than the Super Pad, weighing in at $58 for a 14 inch Artom. By the time you've outfitted your whole kit with the Artom system, you spent $251. So we actually weigh in at costing $12 less for the Artoms than for the Super Pads. Because it's a slight difference, we have to give the Artom an extra point for that. So we're gonna give it a four. So the Artom is ranking a little bit higher, a little bit better than the Super Pad in terms of cost. Now for the Silent Stroke, this one is probably the most popular out of these three because it costs so much less. You can get a 14 inch Silent Stroke mesh head for only 20 bucks. And you can outfit your entire kit with Remo Silent Strokes for only $95. So under 100 bucks, you can quiet down your kit with the Remo Silent Strokes. So because of that price, we have to give it a five. So the Silent Stroke is the most viable option if you're on a tight budget. But there's a lot more very important factors here and we wanna consider these carefully when we're gonna be playing on these all the time and working on our skills as a drummer on these different pads. So moving on to ease of use, the Super Pads and the Artoms, we just place over the drums, which is super easy. We don't have to replace any heads. So for the Super Pads, that's an easy five. These are super easy to put on. You just lay it on the drum, kind of press around the gasket on the outside to make sure it's sitting snugly inside the rim of the drum. The Artom is pretty much the same way. It actually has this stiff rubber rim that sits around the rim of the actual drum. It takes a little bit of effort to get it to seat on there. Once it is seated, it's not going anywhere, so that's great. But just because it takes about 30 seconds or so of pressing and going around the edge with your fingers and weighing down half of it with your arm while you're making sure you've got that edge around the rim, we really can't give the Artom a five, but it is much easier than the Silent Stroke. So we're giving the Super Pad a five for ease of use, the Artom a four. The Silent Stroke, unfortunately, we have to give it a one because it's a lot of trouble, a lot of effort switching everything around, but that's just something that you're going to deal with if you buy the Silent Stroke. Okay, so these next three categories are pretty important, especially rebound and feel. It's important that these pads feel like an actual drum, that the rebound is accurate. We have to break this up into snare, toms, and kick because those are very different and each of these systems feels totally different on the snare versus the toms versus the kick. So we'll start with the super pad and we'll start with the snare. I really like the feel of the snare super pad. It feels more like a practice pad than a mesh head. And it's kind of an in-between. I think it feels like a sort of a softer drum head. You still get the same rebound. You can play doubles really well. It's not as overly bouncy as a lot of practice pads. And it's also not as springy in an annoying way as a mesh head. So it's kind of a good in-between. For the toms though, the problem with the super pads is that they have a pretty consistent feel pad to pad, no matter the size, no matter which drum they're on. Maybe for a rack tom, that's okay, but for our 16 inch super pad over on the floor tom, it really doesn't feel like a floor tom. 
There is slightly less rebound than a smaller Super Pad, but just barely. It's really not much of a difference. I found it not to be a big deal in my playing. It doesn't really bother me that it doesn't feel just like a floor tom. But if you're picky about that sort of thing, you might want to have a type of practice head that you feel like you can lay into and that has more give to it. Again, these aren't super springy. It's not like having like a real feel practice pad on your toms. That would be not good at all. These are better than that. They're just not ideal. So for the toms, we have to give it a three. And for the kick, I don't show this a lot in this video, but you can check out a lot of my other videos to listen to how this sounds and see how this whole thing works because I've used it um, for a long time. The super pad includes this Batman shaped piece of foam and it's got like this cork board and all these layers of stuff that muffle the kick drum. You mount that on the head and then we've just got a nice thump. Nice and quiet, it's not too springy. This also preserves some low end, which is really cool. It makes it fun to play. So I really like the Aquarian super pad kick head. We'll give that a five. On to the silent strokes. On the snare, we really can't rank this one too good because the problem with the, the silent strokes in general, the mesh is a very fine, very springy, stretchy kind of mesh. And so as you tune it up, you get a lot of spring. And if you drop the stick on it, you can really feel how it does the initial bounce, which is about like normal, very natural, but it just keeps bouncing. And it goes into like this infinite buzz that finally dies off which is not really accurate to an actual drum. An actual drum, even if it's tuned high, you're gonna get that bounce, but it's not gonna continue to bounce springily as it's like down to that last inch. And so I found that to be kind of annoying, kind of weird with the silent stroke, and I just don't like the feel of this particular mesh. So for the snare, we can really only give it a three. However, for the toms, I think these work just fine. There is a lot of spring to it, but if you tune them low, you get a little bit less of that extra buzz. So for toms, these would work just fine. So we'll give them a five. As for the kick, I do not have a Remo silent stroke mesh head kick, but I do have mesh heads that came with my Pearl Rhythm Traveler kit a long time ago. And those are very similar to the Remo silent strokes from what I've noticed with the 14 inch silent stroke that I have. So assuming that their kick mesh head is very similar to the Pearl one, I don't like the springiness that you have where if you try to bury the beater in the head, no matter how loose, if you do have it tuned loose, it still buzzes and flutters. And plus it just doesn't feel right. It just, you can't bury it in there. You could bounce it off, but even then it's too springy. Mesh heads on kick just don't work in my opinion. They don't really feel right. They're just kind of annoying, they're frustrating. Plus you don't get to preserve much of that thump if you want to throw a mic in there for when you're practicing. And so your sound options are a little bit less. So the silent stroke on the kick, we have to just give that a three. Now for the R tom. So, I'll go ahead and spoil this and say the Artom wins big time for rebound and feel. What's very cool about the Artom mesh is that it's a heavier duty kind of mesh. The actual mesh wires are a little bit bigger than on the Remo Silent Stroke. And so it, it feels a little bit more like, maybe like a trampoline material, where it still has a little bit of stretch, but it's just denser, probably more durable. And the patch in the middle actually helps deaden that springiness a little bit. But overall, the head feels very much like a real drum. And I think it's just because it's thicker. So the Artom's really cool because it's a over drum mesh head, but you can still tune that mesh head using this little red key that comes with it. You can crank this metal ring in there either direction, which either expands or contracts the ring, which either tightens or loosens the mesh head, which is really cool, making this super versatile. So the Artom on the snare feels really good. You can play doubles well. It feels very much like a real drum because it's a thicker mesh. It actually kind of has a hardness to it, but it's still very quiet. The patch in the middle, I think, helps with that and is probably there for reinforcement also. But this is a very durable mesh and I can't imagine it would ever dent or even really wear out. So we will give it a ranking of five for the snare. For the toms, we're also gonna give it a five because it's so cool how you can tune this thing. You can tune it lower, you can tune it higher. And again, because it's a thicker, heavier mesh, when you tune it low, it very much has that dead feel. And when you tune it high, it feels a lot like a drum head. So that is a definite five in the tom category. Now for the kick, I don't have the kick, so I really can't give you an honest, accurate assessment of this. Based on what I've seen from the silent strokes, based on what I know from my past mesh heads I've had, and based on what I know about this particular Artom head, because it's a heavier mesh, it is probably much more suitable to a kick head than the thin Remo silent stroke mesh. 
So there's probably less of that over springiness and, and a lot less of that flutter. And so it probably does feel better as a kick drum. I'm gonna give it a four. So our next category is realism, which really is more of just a summation of the snare, kick, toms, rankings that we just did, because we're really just taking it a step further and comparing it to an actual drum. As you can guess, based on what I've said here, the r -tom wins for realism because we can tune that mesh head to where we want it for snare and where we want it for a rack tom or a floor tom. And I'm guessing that we can get it to feel pretty much like a very quiet kick drum. So we're gonna give the R-Tom a five, perfect score for realism. The silent stroke will get a four because we can get the toms tuned lower and we can get the snare tuned higher and we can maybe get the kick where we want it, but because the kick really isn't ideal and because the snare is overly springy, we can't give it a five, but because we can get them all different and kind of roughly emulate the feel of different drum tunings, we'll still give it a four. And the super pads, we really have to give it a three. I really like the feel of the snare pad. Uh, I really like the feel of the kick pad, but because the toms just don't feel like toms, we really, I have to be honest and try to be unbiased here towards my super pads that I really like and just give this one a three because the toms just aren't totally realistic. And now noise level. We're gonna give all these a five. They all do very well with that. They're all very quiet. They have different sound characteristics, different noise characteristics. They're roughly the same average volume. They just produce some different frequencies. Like the super pads tend to be more thumpy. There's more of a thump, less of an initial attack. The r -tom tends to have a little bit of a, kind of a clicky kind of attack, which is great for when you're practicing doubles. And it's got a little bit of a hum because the, the mesh vibrates and you hear the other heads resonating, but it's still very quiet. Same with the silent strokes. So those you tend to get a little bit of a higher sort of hum, maybe because it's a thinner mesh. Now, there does come a big difference if we talk about playing cross sticks, rim clicks, rim shots, whatever. On the Remo silent strokes, we've got an exposed metal rim there. So if we play a rim shot on the silent stroke, it is not a silent stroke. It's very loud, very heavy sounding, and that defeats the purpose that probably would not fly in an apartment or a college dorm or anywhere where you've got neighbors nearby. But that's what makes the Artom super cool because it actually has a rubber rim that seems to be a very sturdy, high quality rim. So you can actually play an actual rim shot. Obviously it's a quiet rim shot, but you can tell it does get a hair louder and a little bit more attack when you hit a rim shot. So you can practice that. It feels just like an actual drum. So that's the big plus. That's why I really like the Artom on the snare because I can play rim shots, cross sticks, rim clicks, whatever, and I don't have to worry about actually hitting a loud metal rim. Now the super pads, uh, like I said, they're thumpy. They're pretty low on the initial attack. They sound really cool. I like the sound of the super pads because you can mic them up, mess with the EQ. You can pull a lot of low end out of them. The snare actually sounds really funky because you put it on a snare and it sounds like it's been detuned a bunch. So you get this really funky sort of, sort of sound that you can hear in a lot of my other videos. So the super pad honestly wins for just sounding cool. They just have the coolness factor. It's a really cool sound. So yeah, we'll give everything a five there for noise level. Really one isn't better than the other in terms of noise, unless we're talking about rim shots and stuff involving the rim. And that's where the silent stroke does not compete. So lastly here, we'll just show some video of me playing each of these on the snare. So I've got the super pads on the toms and on the kick and the Zildjian L80 low volume cymbals. And I'm just trading out silent stroke, super pad, r -tom on the snare. And just so you can hear the differences in context with the kit. Well, I hope this helped you guys out. I know there's been a lot of questions over what's the best practice system out there. And so I really hope I could kind of clear things up and show you some details and differences between these to help you make a well-informed and educated decision on which practice pad is best for you. Also, I've included links to all three of these products in the description, so check those out. These are affiliate links, so that means if you do decide to use them to purchase the product, I will get a small kickback, and so I will greatly appreciate your support for this channel. 
As always, thanks everyone for watching and a big thanks to my subscribers for your support. I hope to continue bringing you guys valuable and honest content that addresses the non-glamorous side of drumming. I'll see you on the next video.